today. Our next speaker comes to us from a company called Umbrella. His name, he's the CEO. His name is George Petsis. I'm going to invite him to the stage. George. Hello. Um, first of all, it's um, a great pleasure Make sure they lower the and um, a great privilege to be here today with you. Uh, before I start, I want to thank Mr. Samer Omar for this great uh, conference and of course Virtuport for organizing uh, this elegant event in Riyadh, in the Kingdom. By the way, I am George Patsis, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of Obrella Security Industries. We at Obrella manage risks. We manage also exposure and we manage compliance. We identify, predict, and prevent cyber threats in real time. From this standpoint, I'm here today to share with you our, our perception, our view, and our vision for the future about cybersecurity. Um, but before I start, I want to challenge you because I think we're not here really for cybersecurity. Yes, I don't think that we are here for cybersecurity. I truly believe that the real reason that we are here today is because our world is changing. I am using a term which has been very rarely used in the past when the world really changed radically, when the dimensions of the world changed radically. And these words are actually defined a new world order. I think we are exactly in the same situation where the world has so radically changed that we can use the same terms, new world order. And we can actually define those dimensions of this new world order by analyzing our digital footprint, which can be briefly represented by four numbers. Dear friends, dear colleagues, three billion users, three billion users connected, more than 10 billion devices, 72 exabytes of traffic, and more than eight zettabytes of information stored in cyberspace. So that is a new world order. Sight, sound, and touch technologies have helped us experience the world differently. Companies have been connecting with each other, with government, and with their vendors, building bond bigger and, and stronger bonds, and exchanging data in real time. We envision a, a new future for us and for our children. It's true, however, that this may not be exactly the case for some other people, the adversaries. And as the world evolved into this new state, crime has also evolved. It hasn't changed. Crime has remained exactly the same. The DNA of crime has never changed. It has used this new word to evolve. It is actually using this new world order because its economics are more efficient. It can scale faster, it can be risk-free, and it can now affect a huge amount of people, governments, regions. Contested estimations actually value this the impact of cybercrime to more than 300 billion um, to our global economy. I, I've, I've heard a lot of numbers today, so I don't want actually just to give you a number. I want to give you a perspective. It may be an analogy to use that the world traffic, illegal uh, uh, drugs traffic, is the same amount. It's almost 300 billion. The cost of the climate change to our global economy in 2017 was 1.1 trillion. And that's the impact that we estimate to reach for cybercrime in 2020. So the amounts are huge. We actually talk about three different things that change in our, in our world today. Number one is climate change. Number two is political and social stability. 
right. and number three is cybercrime. So this is big, it's, it's getting bigger. At the same time, companies are uh, unable to keep the pace. I'm using this report from McKenzie just to demonstrate how this is a fact. Yeah. It actually says that most of the companies today are lacking capability, really? are immature. Only five to 10% have demonstrated really capabilities, real capabilities to address this challenge. You know what, the, what was the most important from this report? That there was no connection between the funding of the organization and the actual results of the maturity. So that meant, that no ma doesn't matter how much money you throw in the bucket, if you are not spending it properly. I think if I was a meteorologist, I could use the term perfect storm conditions because that's exactly what we are experiencing right now. And as a security expert, I can say that all the conditions are met and a big storm is coming. Growing cyberspace, cybercrime evolving to a high return, low risk activity. Enterprise security unable to keep the pace and law enforcement incapable actually to mediate the effect. The basic reason being because of the judicial cooperation. So if the crime takes place in Riyadh, this doesn't mean that the criminal is in Riyadh as well. So it may be in Russia. And it, if the attack is initiated from Russia, it may go through another territory. So it may be necessary to address three different jurisdictions before you actually hunt the criminal. So it is, uh, I think, my belief, but from those numbers, we all can say that and can con uh, uh, confirm that as well, that um, our industry is failing. Our work and our job to secure the companies is failing. And um, I'm using also some numbers to explain that which say that although we keep increasing and keep spending more and more money year after year, the actual attacks keep increasing. And you could say, okay, hang on a minute. I'm keep spending, I'm spending more and more money and this keep increasing, so what better proof is there to say that we are failing? The market, the security market has failed to address the problem. One trillion will be spent, dear gentlemen, to cybersecurity, vendors, products, software, and services from 2017 to 2021. So yes, you should expect that the problem should be solved. 70 different products and vendors actually are used on an average on per organization. So whatever, what, what else do you need to, to actually say that, how, how is this actually sustainable? How can you use 70 different products as an organization? It's obviously that something we as a market doing wrong. We have been segmenting this market so heavily that for everything, for every small thing that happens, we just produce another product. This is not the way forward. I think this, uh, there is certainly time for things to change. And okay, what, what the statistics say, you have bought everything, you have acquired everything, everything the best out of the self solution has been in, in your uh, data center. And on average, it still takes 240 days to detect and react effectively to a cybersecurity incident. So if this is not a failure, then what it is? So we strongly believe, I strongly believe, and I think you can share that with me now, that it is time for a change. I think it is time for a change. To address those challenges, the market has been growing very fast. I'm sorry. The market has been uh, actually, uh, we have failed to consider in our security models that it is a fact, that it is a mathematical certainty, that no matter how much you invest, no matter how much complex is your architecture, it will fail. So one reason that we have failed is that we actually built wrong models. 
models that used to be prevent everything from happening, where we should actually create a model to be able to agile, resilient, and respond effectively to when something goes wrong. We also forgot and we consider technology as a solution. It's not the solution. It's maybe a key part, but it's definitely not the solution. And the common approach to build more and more layers of defense, it's clearly not sustainable anymore. Last but not least, we have failed because we left people and human intelligence out of our security. Nothing will work without human intelligence. I'm telling you, we operate, we process billions, terabytes of data on a daily basis. We protect our clients, highly visible customers around the globe. But our core is our people. We base our decisions based on our people. The more they skill the people, the better the leverage of the technology of the underlying technology. The market has um, rushed, and I think that that was a good thing, to become a data-centric, uh, to provide data-centric solutions. Uh, you know that everybody has spoken about this today, about analytics, about CM technology, uh, about big data, about MDR, managed detection and response services, about M managed services. Okay, this is what's been a, 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 a great jump in front. The truth is that very valuable information, structured or unstructured, remain hidden, invisible, and we don't have access to that information. And that is not because of the content that we analyze. It's because of the context that we fail to address properly. So when we need to analyze data, we don't need necessarily to focus on technology-related data. We need to design properly the context. And every analytics technology today, every service provider fails because it doesn't have the, the way to access information related with penetration testing, compliance, risk assessments, ad hoc reports, tickets, procedures, um, network diagrams, asset mapping, asset criticality, active directories and access control, roles, rules. No, we don't use that. The only thing that we use is primary metadata coming from pure security or security-related systems and applications, and that's it. For example, if you actually request an access to a system, the only thing that we can see, or actually the market can see today, is what the technology has to say when a log is changing by the time that you create that access. But who actually gave the authorization? Who verified that authorization? Who was the administrator who received the ticket and actually implemented that in the system? We don't cross-correlate any of that in our data. It is a fact, and we strongly believe, the way forward is not only to integrate data, but the way forward is to integrate and streamline workflows, procedures. And the only way that we can do that is if we have a centralized workflow engine that can integrate all there is, uh, subsequent procedures into one horizontal or many vertical workflows. Remarkably, when we do that, we create data. We create data because when you run a process, if you can manage and monitor now the unique workflow engine, you have access to unique data generated by this workflow engine. And now you can feed your analytics and your data analytics engines and your correlation engines with more data. And, of course, you can feed back again and trigger a workflow. So we are now able to unhide invisible fragments of information, invaluable security-related data and records, which we were never able to use before. Extremely valuable security-related structure or unstructured can now help us identify things that we were never able to identify in the past. It can help us actually maintain knowledge and reach the knowledge and actually measure the performance of how good we are. 
without you know, relying to someone to come and tell us what is, how we're doing in terms uh, of security with an audit or with an assessment. We now have everything into one place. So integrated risk, management, integrated risk management is what I'm talking about, which is not a technology really, it's not a product, it's more than a mindset shift. It's about integrating people, process, and technology, and managing risk in real time. So we need to bring those things together. Integrate people, process, and technology, but also manage risk in real time. Oh, now, I can't even see that. imagine that you have all of your data into one single data pool. Not in 50 databases, not into one CM engine, and then you have another analytics engine, and then you have your uh, uh, another repository with data, or with files, with your penetration test results, and then you have a vulnerability management system, and then you have a risk assessment, or you have a GRC platform. No, you need to have everything into one single data pool. And then if you do have that, you need to create another single unified streamlined workflow, centralizing all your business workflows coming from human resources. What happens when someone leaves the company do you remove the rights? Do you remove access? You have to, but then you need to update the database as well. And you can do that if you integrate the HR procedures with your security single a workflow engine. The same happens with every security process. So if you integrate all business processes with your hub, and then you have also your data, you accomplish something unique. You can have Everything. now the workflow generating yes. data, and data can be analyzed by our engines and by our statistics and by our algorithms, and then the data can also trigger a workflow. So now you have two things that communicate with each other, generating information from the one side and triggering workflows from the other. And what is this? How can you call it? You can name it artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is not something that you buy from the self, and you install in a rack, and then you pay maintenance. No, it's something that you build. And that's the unique thing from an IRM technology, an IRM solution. In fact, 50% of the organizations today will be using an IRM solution by 2021. An IRM is about integrating, consolidating, centralizing. It's about organizing things that have been segmented all of those years to 50 different products and 50 different vendors. You need a single dashboard, you need a single console of how compliant you are, how exposed you are, how many attacks are you receiving as we speak, how many workflows do, do your people run, how compliant are those procedures with your policy. You need to have one single thing to do that, and that's an IRM. The benefits are very, very many, and, uh, but I try to focus to the three most important that I consider at least most important. The most, one of those is interoperability. With an IRM, you must, you can have an interoperability because all of your systems now become one. No, it's not just a firewall there and a firewall over there and uh, an, an ELK or a CM or a, an ArcSight or a Splunk and then exposure management. No, you have one thing which integrates everything with everything. And then you have visibility, vigilance. And what you can accomplish if you integrate the workflows together and the data? You manage to have four things together things that are isolated until it w they were isolated, they are still isolated. For example, okay, okay one is cybersecurity. Number two is fraud management. Because if you can have content for fraud management, then you can have the data into a single place as well. Number, number three, you have physical security. You can integrate physical security systems. And number four, cyber safety. Because cyber safety is what is coming and we should be expecting it. Cyber safety is about cyber security for IoT, for our homes, to protect our children, mobile devices, everything. So this is vigilance. And I think uh, quite important is also agility. Agility because of the content. Because now you have not only the content, you have the context and you have the knowledge. So you changing the content, you can adapt, you can comply, you can move forward without asking for every single vendor to come to provide his know-how for you to be, you know, compliant. 
I think, uh, and uh, I think that's, that's a closing remark, that it's a great time for the kingdom. And uh, I think the basic reason that this is the be perfect timing in, 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 is that every, in, everyone in the kingdom is really committed to this. You have the government, you have the organizations. It's, it's, uh, we've, be, we've been working to many countries. It's the first time that we see every CEO on the table for a cybersecurity uh, uh, project, issue, you name it. So it's the perfect time for the kingdom to adopt IRM and lead the IRM. Why not develop knowledge in terms of IRM? Because it addresses the problem primarily of the lack of knowledge. With an IRM solution, you can build knowledge because you, d you shouldn't rely all the time to third parties, to third countries, to third contractors to, to create the knowledge. And if you pay once, you need the knowledge to be there. So IRM is actually allowing, allowing for this. You can build knowledge on top and maintain this knowledge in the kingdom. It also unveiled, unveils a unique potential in terms of integrating four different things together. I explained that before. Cyber security, fraud management, cyber safety, and physical security. And if you accomplish that, you become more efficient. In every single organization we've been, there is a department for physical security, another one for fraud, another one for cyber security. What if you could merge everything? How more efficient would you be? How less money would you spend? So I think it's time for the kingdom to grab this opportunity because it's a new thing that comes up and will go for, fa for a lot of years to come. Um, I think it also, this is my humble, humble opinion, and that's exactly what we're doing at Obrella. We'll create a new generation of MDR players or service, cybersecurity service providers, because with such technology, we will be able to outsource and provide cybersecurity services completely as a service, based on service level agreements, delivered to the end customer with no technology stack on the client side, and be able to manage all the aspects, compliance, exposure, risks, all under a single console. That's exactly that, what we've been developing in Obrella over the last years, and we, we do that to differentiate even further and support better our client base. Finish. I wouldn't like to, to tell you now more because that this is not the objective of this presentation, but I would be really very happy to visit and meet each one of you and uh, explain you more. Again, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was a privilege and it is a privilege to be in this great country uh, amongst all of those uh, great people. Thank you very much, Sukran. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Thank you very much for that excellent speech. Okay. Uh, the team from Samantha.